ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rick Ingram Talks to Strangers. And now, here's your host, Rick Ingram. Hi guys, welcome back. Rick Ingram Talks to Strangers. We're back in the dungeon. We've got a new stranger. Life is good. Well, it's it's bad, but it's good how bad it is. Um, but tonight we got Matt Lowe. Is that right? Yep. Uh, Matt, that's a pretty common sounding name. Mm-hmm. It leaves you a lot to live up to. <laughs> you gotta you gotta really make sure you're the Matt Lowe. I even think I went to high school with the Matt Lowe. Uh, yeah, I actually looked up to see if there was any other famous Matt Lowe's, and I don't know if I'm gonna catch up. This guy is doing a lot of shit. He's uh done voiceover work and commercials okay. like every commercial yeah so. yeah that sucks i i <laughs> other uh other people with my name include um a black chef who cooked for Dwayne wayne for a while oh, okay and uh Dwayne wade i should say Dwayne wayne was the guy from a different world <laughs> um and then there's some guy who is a football coach at university of texas that's probably way more respected than me <laughs> i think it was like in the 50s though so he's probably racist <laughs> Um, how you doing? Thank you for being here. Hey, no problem. I'm great. Um, just <laughs> trying to get used to Los Angeles. Yeah, where are you from originally? Uh, Portland, Oregon area. All right, and you moved to L.A. when? Uh, in July. Okay, what brought you to L.A.? Uh, I've always wanted to come down here just because, uh, I want to get in the entertainment business for, um, just a lot of things. Yeah. Um. What's the ultimate dream? If someone, if, if... You know, the mayor of Hollywood said you can do whatever you want here. How does how does that end for you? That's how it works, right? Yeah. This yeah. might not be why I progress very long. I people go, "Why are you held back?" I go, "The, the mayor's never called me." I need to note this down. I'm doing everything wrong. Yeah. Um, basically, I'm trying to get into porn. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> that would be fantastic. No, uh, I worked really hard to figure out what that was before I came back because I tried to come down here before and it did not work out. Um, I was eaten alive. And before I came back again, I was like, what do I really want? <clears throat> and I basically just want to entertain people. And I want to, and I have skills in so many different areas. I just want to do it for myself. And if other people like it, that's awesome. And yeah. I just wanted to give it a try, you know? Do you do comedy? Do you write? Do you do? Uh, I, I like to sing. Um, okay. I'm like the songbird of our generation, but see a lot. But I'm afraid to sing in front of people, so it's like like a few family members and friends have heard me, and I didn't know they were home, and they were like, "Oh my god, I was moved by that," and I'm like, "Well, no one's ever gonna hear it." So, yeah. um, <laughs> but well, I just, I, I mean, that, that's a it's a terrible <laughs> predicament to be in. Uh, yeah, I could. I do s- like the confidence of I'm the songbird of our generation. <laughs> I could probably save the world with my singing, but yeah. it's it's mine. But, so, um, is it Step Brothers. Is that- yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of like, I'm like, yeah, some movie. I'm picturing Will Ferrell. Um, it sounded like Fergie. <laughs> so I basically, Jesus. I feel like, and I don't, I'm not saying this like I'm an established, but I feel like in my soul, I'm an artist because I just feel like I have so many feelings and I have so many skills in different areas and I just want to, I just want to create and I want to yeah. do things. But if I was going to say like the main avenues, it's acting, uh, stand up and hopefully music just and if it's just for fun and nothing comes out of it that's cool or if i get you know really famous that's cool too i like i mean that that is definitely (laughs) that's a plus i end up getting super famous and possibly rich (laughs) yeah i'll take it i like the laissez-faire way of look if i end up being the biggest star of all time then cool you know whatever i guess um all right well and uh born and raised in portland No, actually, I was born in the Bay Area. Okay. I've moved from California to the... And I should say that I'm I'm from Vancouver, Washington, but I usually say just Portland because people are like, what the hell is that? They usually think Vancouver, Canada. Yeah. And they think when I say Washington, they're like Washington, D.C., so it just gets all confusing. But um, we're like the mini... Or I guess I'm living down here now, so I was like the mini Portland is what they called it. It's right over the bridge. Okay. Um. But what did you say before that? <laughs> um, no, I was just figuring out your journey to getting oh, to Los okay. Angeles. So yeah, it's been a lot of back and forth between California and the uh, the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. So I was born in the Bay Area, and then at like ten, I moved to Washington State, and then at like twenty four or twenty five, I moved back to the Bay Area, then back up to Portland after that, and then back to Los Angeles, and back to Portland, and now back here. 
Well, how long were you in LA the first time around? Uh, probably like a year. Okay. And um, I had just been on like a reality show, so I was being picky about jobs, and not because I thought I was the shit or anything, but I just like. I did not. I was having a lot of people ask me questions, and I didn't want to work at like McDonald's and be stressed out at McDonald's because I've done that kind of job before. Yeah, and have people be like, "Aren't you that guy?" And I'm like, "I just, I'll lose my mind." Yeah. So I was being picky. I wasn't working on my mental health, and I just cracked under pressure. And I was like, "I need to go back home before I die down here." So yeah. I'm very I, dramatic too. I, uh, <laughs> I, nothing wrong with that. You came to the right place because <laughs> this is where the drama lives. Uh, yeah, I, I I highly recommend if people are thinking about moving to L.A. to um, be trampled and have your soul destroyed before moving <laughs> Before you here. come down here, yeah. And then no matter what, as bad as it seems, you're always just like, well, at least it's sunny. Yeah. That's how I've survived for, I think, four or five years. It was like, you know what, it was pretty shitty before, but at <laughs> least it's 70 now. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> all right, so you were on a reality show. Is, is Monsters? Is that what, what's... What? Six hundred. It's my. Uh, it's my handwriting. Yeah. What does this say? Six hundred pound life monsters. No, I'm just kidding. Catfish. MTVs. Oh, MTVs. I'm like, what is? What is this an abbreviation for? <laughs> I forgot that MTV is still a thing. I was on a show called Fat Monsters. They just watched me eat KFC the whole time. It was that, nice. Listen, that, <laughs> yeah. we could probably get that a, a million views on YouTube <laughs> right green now. Lit. That's where the kids are all about. Um, so you were on MTV's Catfish season one. Yep. That's and that's the show where did someone catfish you? This is this is why I love that I was on it because they didn't really know exactly what they were doing as the first season. I was technically the first episode they ever filmed, but mine was the third one that came out. Um, well, explain it because I've never seen it. I, yeah. I kind of know what it is. Yeah, but... the term's gotten really big. Every time I see it on other shows, I'm like, oh, I was on that show. Yeah. Um, but basically, it's somebody online making a fake profile, pretending to be, most of the time, pretending to be someone else and lying to the other person. And then when they show up, they're like, you're not the woman I was talking to. You're some guy right. who's just doing it for fun or whatever. It's usually something really, really dramatic and crazy. That's why when people hear that I was on the show and I have to say, technically, I was the catfish, they immediately think I'm a piece of shit. And I'm like, it's not what you think. Mine was like 20 million seasons ago, and it was a little bit different back then. Yeah. I honestly think my episode was different compared to oh, most of them. There's a few that were kind of similar, but because um, I never made a fake profile. Uh, I didn't really lie to her or anything. I just... Um, I guess she just didn't know exactly how fat I was, but she knew I was fat. <laughs> so it was like okay. she, didn't, she didn't know exactly like how depressed I was and how sure. I wasn't telling anybody. So there, that's pretty much. And they <clears throat> they basically just showed like the mental health side of things, and um, yeah, and just had her and I meet. That was the first time we met after talking for fourteen or sorry, eleven years. So well, yeah, hold, hold on. So you talked to someone for eleven years. So that's the other thing. A lot of people are like, I've had people message me like, you piece of shit. You were talking to her for so long. Like, why wouldn't you meet up with her? I'm like, first of all, I was like 14. Yeah. Uh, the internet like just came out. It's one of the best ages to get <laughs> yeah. out and start catfishing. Yeah. And I was like AOL, the very first one that came out. And uh, Dang, this guy's instant message. Catfishing. <laughs> that, <laughs> That's exciting. Old school. Yeah. And uh, I used to go on the lesbian chat. So I guess technically I used to be a catfish and didn't know it uh-huh. because uh, me and all the other teenagers in the world would go into lesbian chat rooms and pretend to be lesbians to trade pictures with other lesbians. But it was... <laughs> It was yes. just it was just like teenage kids trading porn together per- sure. thinking that the other person was a lesbian. So um <laughs> it it makes it hotter. I yeah, guess. so maybe I am a piece of shit. I don't know. Um <laughs> but no, I was like 14 when I first started. <laughs> Welcome back to Are You a Piece of Shit with Rick Ingram. <laughs> uh and I'm still in those lesbian chat rooms. No, um yeah. <laughs> so I was like 14 when we started talking and like it just I Wait, so did she think you were a lesbian or is this something <laughs> no, different? No, sorry, yeah, no. Okay. no. Uh, she was actually just a random person that was on my friend's AOL list, and I uh, just talked to her, got to know her, and we just stayed in contact. And then uh, we started having feelings for each other. You know, we're young kids talking all the time, and uh, we just never – she lives in Michigan, 
and I lived in Oregon. Red flag already. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, it just we were talking about visiting, and then finally, when I was actually able to afford to do something like that, that was about where I was just in my own depression of like, I don't even want to go outside, let alone fly somewhere. So. A lot of people, when they hear that length, they're like, it's so crazy. You guys were dating that long and you didn't even like FaceTime. Or I'm like, that wasn't even a fucking thing back then, man. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, we're sending VHS tapes <laughs> to each other. Just handwritten letters and uh, pigeons is pretty much. <laughs> uh, all right. So then well, how how does MTV get involved? When when does, who would, who contacted who and said, hey, listen, MTV. <laughs> So she mess or she wrote them an email, but I had to agree to do it, obviously. Yeah. And they filmed all that, um, him calling me for the first time, and I, uh, I really was gonna say no because I mean I was like trying to better myself at that time, but it's just like you know I, I think when the show happened, I was still like not that far from six hundred pounds, so. Which I don't know if I've said that yet. No, yeah, <laughs> so, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I always tell people they're like, "What reality show were you on?" And people were saying you were on. I'm like, 600 pound life, just whatever, dude." <laughs> um, <laughs> so it was like, I the only reason why I even said yes because of course I wanted to meet her, but just on the list of ev- everything was terrifying to me. But I was trying to better myself, and I was in this new like that Bruce Al- or no, it's not Bruce Almighty. Um, it's the Jim Carrey movie where he says yes to everything. <laughs> Yes, man. Yeah, it has the word yes in it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I had watched that at some point, and I was like, I want to start doing that because I just I noticed being negative, saying no to like literally everything. I was just staying in my room. I was like, I'm just even if someone says, hey, you just want to go to the store for no reason, or you want to do this, I started saying yes to everything. And at that point, I was getting ready to say no again. And I'm like, it's gonna be embarrassing and it's gonna suck, but I just forced myself to do it. And um, yeah, I regret it every day. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and, and life has been one downhill yeah. since. And here I am. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right. And so. It's called Liar Liar. No. But that no. is a good movie. The, I, I think yes there is, Man yes is Man what it was. Is, I think it's yeah. the actual yeah, like, name of a Jim Carrey movie. I believe that. I believe you are correct because he goes to like a motivational yeah. like, speaking thing. and. Right. But Liar Liar is a good classic. <laughs> yeah, that, this movie is definitely worse than Liar Liar. Liar Liar was the start of the decline. Where you're like, hey, let's let's do some talking through the butthole type stuff that you expect from Jim Carrey. If I want to make it in his business, I probably should follow Liar Liar instead of yeah. Yes Man. But you know, um, all right, and so it says six hundred and nineteen pounds. Is that really that's the peak? Yeah, that's it. What how, a loser. How do you get to six nineteen? What how like how long is the process of continuously gaining weight? It's uh and I tell people this all the time, it's like at that point you're you're working to get there because like clearly you're not happy with yourself and yeah and uh I was too uh much of a vagina to kill myself, so I was like, I'll just do it with food, the fun way out. Um <laughs> but, but, first of all there's heroin. Just... Yeah. Oh, you know what? That's a good idea. No. <laughs> uh no, basically it was like it definitely took about five or six years. Yeah. Um and I, I really think working a night shift job in the Bay Area before I moved back home was like a big part of it because it just was destroying my mental health even more. And the only things really open around that time is usually like 7-Eleven and yeah, all the fast food fast places. Food, yeah. So that's what I was living off of. Uh, and then at a certain point, your with your mental health mixed with like how big your stomach can actually get – it's it's just a never ending pit of like torturing yourself and being hungry, torturing yourself and both. And yeah. What's the point at this point? Might as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I moved back home, the thing is, is I had a lot of people around me enabling me and I don't hate them for that or anything because it's like they loved me and they didn't know what to do. So it was like a daily thing that my mom would come in crying, trying to talk to me. Everybody's like, this is so hilarious. No, uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's quite all right. Uh, no, she would just come in and just try to have talks with me, but I'd get defensive, obviously, because I'm like, I don't want to talk about this. Uh, and then she's like, all right, let's just go to the buffet. Shut up. Um, so, <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> and then I was on unemployment when Obama was in office and he kept like extending it. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just like a long time of being unemployed. This is um, around like 2010 ish, 2009. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when I went back home, I think it was like towards the end of 2009, something like that. And I was getting unemployment 
playing a lot of Call of Duty. I got really good. Yeah. <laughs> I probably could be a paid person doing it nowadays, how good I was getting. But, I mean, that's all I did was eat and play video the games. Game. Yeah. So, living the American dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Collecting off of Uncle Sam's tea. Yep, yep. Gaming. This, is, this really is the dream. Uh, so, all right. So, then uh, you have to meet you meet this person. Mm-hmm. Uh, how does that work? You you agree to meet them somewhere? Uh, they came to my apartment that I was living with my mom and stepdad um, at the time. And it's funny because my stepdad is this awesome dorky dude. Uh, and I remember listening to your podcast. You said you don't like Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not a so Star Wars guy. He is uh, really obsessed with Star Wars okay. and Legos. Uh, I believe one of the guests you had were talking about Legos, too. He's yeah. That's our producer, Sosa. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) but it was, it's like in the apartment, every wall in the the room that I was staying in is just covered in figurines, and you could barely walk around. I was always knocking over his Legos because he puts them on display. At this point where he lives now uh, in their house, the entire garage is filled with shelves and shelves and shelves of Legos. Wow. um, and I bring that up because a lot of people, when they see the episode, they see the Legos and they're like, oh, I s- like try to connect with me on that. And I'm like, it's not mine. <laughs> yeah, those, are, those aren't mine. That was the dude boning my mom. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. <laughs> I'll hook you up if you want his number. And so at some point I did bring uh, a girl over to my row too. And it's just, there's figurines on every inch of the wall. And I'm like, it's not mine. I swear. And watch out for the Legos, please. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't knock over the Legos. Yeah, I get but... in trouble like every week. So let's not go through it. <laughs> All right, so they, so then MTV comes to that place. Yeah, they they came to my apartment, um, which I found out that there's been a lot of people that watch the episode and they know the apartment and they've like bothered the people that live there because we don't live there anymore. So it's like, I'm like, I can't believe people would even do that. That's weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was in the top apartment and when they had me come out, it was so funny. She was at the bottom of the stairs for like the reveal. So I'm like this big giant fat prince like i felt like a princess or something because i'm like coming down the stairs and she's at the bottom but they were like oh uh because you know it's reality tv they're like hey we I need c- eight more takes yeah i was like dude i'm so fat you guys are making me walk down these stairs i can't and they're like can you not breathe this hard because i had a microphone or the lapel microphone i'm yeah. like i'm trying to live dude I don't- <laughs> so now i'm like like walking down the stairs like sweating i'm like oh god so nervous um <clears throat> But yeah, we filmed uh, most of the episode, and that's probably why they were like, let's not do as much walking, because they tried to do like a walking thing, and I don't think they put any of that in there, because he was like, he's breathing so hard. I'm like- <laughs> We can't hear him talking. Yeah, what about my life? Does it look like I go on walks and yeah. talk to people like this? So yeah, they uh, they filmed the entire episode uh, mostly. I mean, they filmed more with her, and yeah. then the reveal was like at my place. So all right, so then the, the, the storyline that they- they show on the show is that Mm -hmm. you and her have been talking for a long time and that the catfish is is that you're fatter than you claim to be that that's she's meeting you for the first time and you're a lot bigger and uh i mean it wasn't really so much like i mean i guess that's kind of how they were doing it i think they were more just because biggest loser was like a really big thing happening i don't know right, if it's still I on. about that show yeah, yeah. it was <laughs> i almost got on it a few times actually um but they were like you're just way too big no um <laughs> <laughs> actually that was one of the reasons but they're like we'll send you a casting for something else and it was like some kind of are you over 600 pounds are you you want to be on monsters <laughs> no I was yeah. um but uh yeah, it, it was kind of. Um, um, when I saw that, I thought it said monster catfish. And I'm like, <laughs> in my mind, I I'm like, going finger through, noodle in yeah, the I'm fish. Like, exactly. I you're gutting them out of the holes. I was getting on the tired of, of going to restaurants. I was like, I'm just going to go out there and grab the fish myself. Yeah. Uh, I was really getting excited. I'm like, this is going to be. Monsters. Yeah. They're terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was more that they. Uh, that's why I was saying my episode's a little different than. And I was glad they did this because they focused more on the weight. Uh, you know, tugging at the heartstrings of people, and right. then uh, like the, they let me talk about mental health stuff. So naturally, a lot of people 
you know, because I found out after that that I'm not the only one going through shit. <laughs> and I had just thousands and thousands of people messaging me and telling me their stories and everything. And that's nice. And so I was really glad for that. Yeah, that's, a, that's cool to be able to share experience and pain with other people. Mm-hmm. I'm like, wow, my life is a little better than these people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's always about. <laughs> Whenever people tell me, you know, you know, it could be worse, I go, well, let's meet them. <laughs> let's get them out here. I want to I want to feel better. And it's time to start looking down. Um so then what what happens with the girl? Do you guys uh, <laughs> That's so it's been 11 years. This is the first time you meet? Yeah. And so so chemistry, not chemistry. I think the the rest of the drama for the episode is the fact that um and I feel bad because she gets, you know, everybody's all, oh, he's the fat, nice, jolly guy. And then she gets to like, dumb bitch, like yeah. all the time because she had a boyfriend when she came out to meet me. Oh. And then at the end of it, she like decided just to stay with him um, after I confessed my love. And, uh, you know, so we're going to track her down. <laughs> so that's the thing, though, is like, this is going to be a two part episode. <laughs> How dare you? Uh I just, I guess I just feel bad after it all because, you know, I know she's a great person and I feel like a lot of the things that people say is just her, she was being, she was nervous. I mean, naturally we were both like really nervous and so I think it kind of plays off like she was being rude, but I know her so I'm like, I'm really sorry that you're getting all this hate and people were like, you're such a good guy and it's just, I feel bad about it, but. Yeah. Um, but I was glad that we got to meet. So Yeah. And also she was dating a guy but going to meet a guy. So there's no reason why yeah. you should feel bad about that. <laughs> you know, you can't help it if you've got the sex appeal yeah. that makes her yeah. go, Hey, I should at least What's up? I should feel it out. <laughs> She's like, I know his fridge is stocked at least, so I had that going for me. <laughs> so then it so the show ends, she goes back to Michigan. You're in Portland at this point, or you're down in LA? Uh, San Francisco, not, the yeah, bay. no, I was in, uh, still in Portland, um, and from my mom and stepdad's Star Wars lair that they had, I moved <laughs> to, I was like, this is it, I was on a reality show, let's, uh, let's kind of ride this down to Los Angeles, yep, and, smart. That, and that's it, that's it from there. In, in all honesty, that is legitimately <laughs> the plan of every person who's no. on a reality show. <laughs> exactly, uh, I actually, cause I went to, they didn't do a lot of reunions, but they did one for ours, so they flew us out out to New York. Um, I believe you're not a fan of that place either, right? New York, it's a garbage <laughs> place. We, we're through tw- and through. We're twinning on that because, I mean, I was sick when I went there, but I, I'm like, I don't think it's just because I'm sick. Like, I just didn't enjoy the... Like, they gave us a packet to prepare us before we got there, and I'm like, I don't know if this is a good thing or not. It had this whole list of things to not do in New York because people will mess you up, I guess. They're like, make sure you walk fast on the sidewalks. I'm like, well, I'm already screwed. <laughs> I'm like, what? Uh... And just, I don't even remember the rest of it, because after that, I just almost blacked out. I'm like, I'm not going to make it in New York. They are um, legitimately <laughs> just trying to make you pass out. That's really what it seems like. Yeah. Um, tell, him, tell him to run. <laughs> yeah. They're do like, it. we need you to jog, you know, get some kind of exercise. No. Uh, Swim to the Statue <laughs> of Liberty. See, the thing is, is I went to the reunion, and they had me hanging out with, like, the other catfish. And some of them... I made friends with, and they were, I can tell they were good people, just obviously in whatever situation they were in, but most of them were garbage people, Yeah, and they all eventually kind of got a little buzz at some point just because they were like, I'm going to expose MTV and blah, like, I don't even know what the hell they're talking about, but they were mad because they thought they were going to get famous, Yeah, and I didn't have that thought when I did it. I was like fighting just even to be seen by people. I just said yes because I wanted to meet her, and I wanted to get out of the comfort zone that I've obviously crawled into over all those years. So, um, but when I did move to Los Angeles, it was like time to chase those dreams and kind of connected to it all. But I also wasn't being like crazy delusional or anything. (laughs) Right. Uh, in that sense, but I definitely wasn't ready for this. (laughs) What, What made you decide to start losing weight? What was like the final thing that got you to go? Okay, so the how much wa- weight did you lose, by the way? So here's the thing, um, and <laughs> I haven't talked about it a lot uh, because I I finally said something about it maybe a couple of years ago, um, and haven't really had a lot, a lot of people ask about it. But so before the show reality show came into my life, I was living with my mom, and I was still on her insurance, and she was just for many many years trying to get me to do one of the weight loss surgeries. 
And I was just always like, no, I'm going to do it on my own. I don't need that because society is just filled with a bunch of judgmental assholes. Yep. And everybody's always like, don't take the easy way out, man, blah, blah, blah. And they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah, I've never heard anyone say that, actually. I... People always take the easy way out. <laughs> <laughs> well, when it comes to weight loss, people have a lot of opinions. They'll that judge don't, you anyway. Yeah, that don't. That, yeah. They'll judge you before you lose weight, and then they'll judge you after. They're like, well, I bet you got loose skin now because you worked so hard to change your life, you fucking loser. Yeah. And I'm Enjoy like, your stretch marks. <laughs> Yeah, loser. I'm like, what do you want from me? You want me to stay fat? You want me to lose weight? What is it? Yeah. Uh, they're like, we just want you to walk fast in New York. That's it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, so my mom kept trying to talk me into it, and I finally uh, I finally was like, you know what? I'm going to be off this insurance, and I'm already at – oh, that's another thing, too. I have this tattoo on me. Uh, it's a really shitty one, but the guy overdosed, so maybe you know, don't talk too much Tribute. about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he actually tattooed me and my sisters, and then he overdosed, and we're like, oh, that's a pretty cool movie about a ghost coming back. He's like, I want my tattoos back. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, I branched off a lot. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> we, listen, we'll pitch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this tattoo used to say 500, and that's when I was like, being 500 pounds is crazy. But then I kept gaining weight. My mom's like, oh, you better watch out. You get to change that tattoo. And I ended up having to change it. So, um, which is nice because now everywhere I go, people are like, what do those numbers mean? I found out people don't care about anything. Like, they'll just be like asking you why you have that tattoo on you. Um, I yeah. guess I just never had the balls to do that to people and be like, why do you have that tattoo on your face? Um, <laughs> I ask people a lot. It, it, it's. Uh, <laughs> Especially if I'm on stage and I see people with like a full sleeve, I'm like, "What's going on?" <laughs> well, I, you know, I have, I have my stock jokes. So what does that tattoo mean other than "Shut up, Dad"? I don't have to listen to you. I just, I, I don't mind. I just get surprised because I forget it's there. And then I'm like, "Oh yeah, well, let me tell you how fucking fat I used to be." <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my five year old. It was last year, so when she was four, we were hiking one day, and a guy walked by and was covered like from. Chin down, uh huh. His legs, his arms were all covered in tattoos, and she goes really loud, "What's on that guy's skin?" <laughs> Is go, he dying? Yeah, I go, "Oh, he's got their tattoos." And she goes, "Why do you have so many?" And the guy's like, "I ask myself that a lot." And she goes, "They're everywhere." <laughs> go, yeah, that's right. Some Getting people get grilled. tattoos. It's 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 you know it's fine. She goes, "I don't want any." And I go, "Well, okay, that's cool." <laughs> Sorry. Uh, if there's anybody that knows about the um, just kids being blunt and honest it's definitely me because i would go out when i was 600 to go shopping sometimes yeah. or mostly to get food but it was just like in the store i would have kids behind me in the carts just be like he's so big he's i'm like i know <laughs> <He's> <laughs> shut like, up kids <laughs> actually i might have actually been called a monster a few times nice and a clown um which i don't understand with that i don't see a lot of 600 pound clowns but <laughs> look if, if that's something we could pitch <laughs> I'm just giving you guys all the gold. Yeah, I mean, there's um, a lot of really good ideas here. <laughs> but uh, back to the, the surgery thing, it was like, because of what I've heard from people just in general about it, uh, and because it just sounded scary and I wanted to do it on my own, I fought it for a long time, um, but my mom gave me a good pitch, and I was like, you know what, let's just go through the program, see what happens. And I will say, when you do the surgery, they try to focus on mental health a lot, um, but... I was and and I was in the same place of like, oh, this is gonna save my life. I don't need to change my ways. Like I, I'll be different because basically, the surgery you end up having, <clears throat> it's a little more complicated than the way I'm gonna say it. But they make your stomach smaller. Yeah. So, and uh, but it's just, <laughs> it was. <clears throat> it's it not. Make, you basically get full easier is yeah. that the theory it's yeah it's basically what you it can't is hold as much food so but it's that's the thing is is the reason why i want to talk about it more in general is because a lot of people get judged for it and they're like oh it's su such an easy but it was actually the hardest thing i've been through in my life like i don't regret it because of just the way my life has turned out but after a while i kind of did in the beginning um and it was just it's so much work it's not like an, you don't just go oh one day you just want to do it. They do it. You wake up and you're fine. It's it's a whole crazy ass process. Um, and they want you to focus on mental health. And I would tell anybody that was going to do it to definitely actually listen, accept the help. But I'm such a psycho that when they made me go talk to the therapist, I feel like I was the therapist for the therapist. I was like switching things around, getting that person to talk. And they're like, I can tell when they're trying to kind of scope things out to see if you're crazy or whatever and i'm like i better say this because i know what they're gonna... yeah so you... and i just went through the process and yeah. i thought it was going to be that was it that's all i needed to do 
And uh, yeah, turns out that's not what happens because I had the surgery when you get out of it. It's just a whole process before it. They gave me all these caffeine like type pills at first, like so many. I was like, is this healthy? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, this, uh, was this the 1980s? <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't he, think they do that he anymore. He even told me he take was, these diuretics. <laughs> yeah. If you need to throw up, do he, it. He, oh, he was what? like, yeah. be- because even for the surgery, I was too big for the surgery. They were like, you're so fucking fat. Hey, you have to lose weight before you get the surgery to lose weight. And I'm like, damn. damn. So like, here's all these crack pills because we want your money. And he's like, he even told me, he's like, normally only like prescribe one, but we're gonna give you like three a day. And I'm like. Okay, and I used them for a while, but I started getting really, really paranoid, and I kept thinking people were following me and things like I thought a trash can was talking at one point. I'm like, what the? And that so, does sound like the wrong amount. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so finally, I was like, uh, I already have enough anxiety. I would like to be off of these, please. Yeah. So I ended up losing, uh, I think, about a hundred pounds, like on my own before the actual surgery. Um, and then it's pretty good. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. That, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be better about that's a being, sixth of your body yeah, weight. That's I'm insane. trying to I'm trying to be better about giving myself credit, but I also know when you get into those extreme weights and you actually try and you cut out certain things, you lose weight pretty quick. And the reason why I try to think about that is because with the whole community that's gotten a hold of me, um, there's a lot of skinny people that are. Uh, discouraged are people that are a little bit out of shape, but they're like, I try so hard and I've only lost this much and you lost this much in this time. And I'm like, everybody's body is different. Yeah. Um, but so I put everything into losing weight and nothing into mental health. So inside of my head, I had like this storm going on, but on the outside I was in the gym just every day after I had the surgery. Uh, and the part that really sucks when you get out of surgery is your stomach is so small that you can't even drink water. Like you try to drink water, and if you do it too fast, you'll it just come. Throw right. it up, yeah. yeah. So uh, <clears throat> it's basically, I think they said your stomach is like a golf ball size. It's so small. Um, and I was like, well, let me see if I can figure out how to make it get back to the same size, almost. No. <laughs> so <laughs> we that, can stretch this. <laughs> out. Yeah, I'm like, you know, I'm I'm a I can take challenges. Uh, so basically, I got down to like three. 40 350 um which is still pretty big to a lot of people but for me i've always been a bigger person so when i got down to that size i was getting closer to like my actual goal weights uh weights yeah. goal weight um yeah i mean that that's 35 40 percent of the, your total mass yeah so that, i mean that's very impressive it was it was nice but uh oh and the surgery part okay so first of all <laughs> Uh, they didn't tell me they were going to put a catheter in me. So that was a fun surprise when I woke up. Yeah. I woke up and I was like, I have to pee so bad. I had like this crazy pressure going on. I'm like, I'm about to piss everywhere. And they're like, you are peeing. And, I'm, and I didn't even open my eyes yet because whatever they gave me was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just, so my eyes are closed and I'm like, I'm going to pee myself. And they're, they're like, you are already peeing. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> in that um, case. Excellent. And then we get to the part where they have to take it out. I was asleep when they put it in. Yeah. When they took it out, it was awesome no uh <laughs> it was horrible it's one of the worst yeah I, I i've had kidney stone surgery and uh oh nice i've had to get my i had to get my kidney scoped mm-hmm. and so they're like we'll, we'll just do it now we'll give you some numbing stuff i'm like okay and my mom I'm like what does that mean and then he's like all right you, you might feel a bit of a pinch and then they put it in and i was like yeah holy fuck <laughs> and then when they pulled it out i'm just i'm literally like i'm just like i might die today this is the worst i told people i was like it ever. felt like that when everybody heard about that fish that will swim up your urethra yeah. and the little like claws will come out or whatever and you can't pull it out. I was like it felt like it was in there already and they like pulled it out and it was fighting on its way out. Yeah. It was fast, but I don't think it'll ever be fast enough. Yeah, yeah it was it was a horrible <laughs> experience. Like yeah. have post traumatic stress thinking about you know, he was like, All right, we're going into your kidney now and, I'm, and I can kind of feel it inside. I'm like that doesn't feel good. But then when he's like, All right, we're done, we're gonna take it out and then Pulling it out of my dick was yep. literally like a horror movie where I'm like, this fucking guy is not even a real doctor. What is going on? This is this is totally a setup. I'm being tortured. Yeah, I was like, at first I was like, oh, someone put this in me and someone saw my stuff. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. And I'm like, oh, now i got to be embarrassed again. But when they pulled it out, I was just like, I'm just glad it's over, man. Yeah. And that was, yeah. So uh, after that, I lost weight and pretty quick. But like I said, I wasn't working on the mental stuff. And so it just, I just kept locking it deeper and deeper and deeper. 
And uh, at a certain point, it just it felt like a flood that broke open. And I also got into like a shitty relationship. Now that I'm not going to blame that person, but I started to just you can blame them. <laughs> it's your fault, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was just it was just not healthy in any way. And I just and 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 this is why I say it's not the easy way out because if it was the easy way out. I couldn't have done what I did and gained most of the weight back. Like I oh, almost damn. got back to 600 again. And the problem was, is it was so much harder to even get to that again. And I had to do it by, you know, punishing myself because at a certain point, if you eat too much, y you get sick and you start like puking it back up. And I would be eating like steak and like all this stuff, not chewing my food correctly. And I remember I ate like a little piece of steak and I was always remember this i was waiting for a new call of duty game to come out you know getting back into that habit yeah and then i was in the parking lot just barfing chunks of steak all and i was like how is there this much steak coming out of me i did I, it was like a couple of bites um and it was just that over and over and over again wow. until uh i stretched it out a little bit more and more and then um and then just kept not moving and Basically, I would go to work, go back, and, and just do the same thing I was doing before because I didn't work on any of the mental stuff. Um, and as I was getting closer to the 600-pound mark again, uh, at a certain point, I, I'm i like, this is getting real dark now. But <laughs> you're like, wait, it hasn't yet. <laughs> no, I got to a certain point where um, – How low can you go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I Basically, I – there's been a few times in my life, and they actually put this on the episode, and a lot of people bring it up. They're like, that was the saddest shit I ever heard, man. <laughs> I'm like, because there's like a certain point where I wanted to kill myself, but I was so fucking fat that I was like embarrassed of how I would feel dead. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I'll be dead, and they're going to come in and have to like rip the roof off, and like everybody's going to be just seeing my dead, fat, naked body. Um, <laughs> so I just, that was like what stopped me, which I'm glad. <laughs> uh, and you can see that on Monsters, the new reality show. Yeah. I, uh, I can't even kill myself <laughs> because I would look really fat. <laughs> as Let me corpse. lose some weight first yeah. and then I'll do it. Uh, I want to look my ideal self before the world sees me <laughs> bloated from death. <laughs> and that's the thing too, is like at a certain point I was like, I, I heard that somebody else actually felt that way and he put himself in a pool and set himself on fire. Oh that way when they obviously found him, he probably wouldn't be as fat. <laughs> he was literally hoping that he would burn the fat away. Yeah, exactly. And wow. I actually thought of that, but I'm like, dude, no. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I just, I, I was like, I want to, but it just I mean, sounds shitty. I, like It doesn't sound fast at all. Yeah, it's dark, but <laughs> that, that's got to be one of the worst ways to kill yourself. I get a little sure. burn and I'm done yeah. forever. So I was like, I'm not going to do that. So there was a few times that I <laughs> wanted to and I got close, but I didn't. And then uh, after this whole situation, it was just – and a lot of people didn't even know that I had the surgery because I wasn't, like, walking around advertising it. Sure. Um, and then – and that was a big deal for me. It was, like, a stress that was eating me alive because that's where I was hearing it a lot. After being on that reality show, I had a little bit of a spotlight. People were following my journey. And before I – like, I didn't think I had to, like, advertise that I did that surgery. And then people started saying, like, oh, I'm so glad you did it on your own. Like, people are doing those surgeries these days, and they're such lazy pieces of shit. And I'm like, well, now I definitely don't want to say it. And I've had people that are like, you inspire me. I was going to get the surgery. But, like, now I work really hard. I'm changing my life. I'm like, what the f and so I just didn't <laughs> now advertise. Now you're living it. a lie. Yeah. So and, you... and I am not like I just don't lie. When people like even if people tell me a secret, I'm like, I mean, you can tell me. I, I'm not gonna just go out and tell somebody. But like, I I don't like the pressure of any of that shit. I don't like to lie. It's just too much drama, too much work. Sure. Um. So that was eating me alive. On top of the fact that I was uh already beating myself up for no reason at all. Yeah. Um. And. Yeah, so I basically was finally just done, and I, I had just gotten off antidepressants. Uh, I just broke up with my toxic ex, and just like, and I was all alone at home, and I was like, "This is it. I'm out. Yeah, I'm just done." And uh, and I almost did it. I almost hung myself. Um, Jeez. But like right before I did it, I was like, I was like, I could just. Like, actually try. Like, because I just got a new uh, nephew. My sister just had a kid. I was also living with my sister. I'm like, and all these things started flashing in my mind for the first time. I'm like, 
My sister's been through so much. Like, the last thing I want for her to do is come home in her garage and find me. I don't want my nephew to grow up and be like, oh, I never got to meet my uncle. Like, all these things. And I still, and I'm like, but I can just try, like, one time, like, for real, real try. And from there, like, I'm so glad that I didn't fucking do it because from there, like, shitty things happen, but I'm like, I'm alive. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and I'm trying to work through it. So just, and I don't. I haven't really even shared that story a lot because I don't want people to think like that's where you have to get. <laughs> that's my whole point of trying to like. You can make it better before yeah, you get there. Yeah, you don't have to like literally have the rope around your neck. You can stop it before that. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm so open on all my social media since the show. Uh, and a lot of people are like, you can put your stuff on because I'm I'm sure you've had crazy shit people <laughs> say to you or try to do or whatever is happening yeah. in the crazy world of the internet. Uh, I'm a complete psychopath, so I, I welcome all <laughs> bring the it on. violent criticism I receive. <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> yeah. So socio. I don't remember. I might be a sociopath. I can never all remember which one it is. Yeah. Um. And so, but I'm like, I, the people that I make connections with, that I give support to, and that support me, like those make it worth filtering out. At this point, I'm just used to it. I kind of like see a pattern. Yeah. People, they, their first couple of messages, I'm like, I already know what this person wants, and I hate all of it. And yeah. so, or a lot of dudes are like, I just watched your episode. Uh, my girlfriend forced me to, uh, but I just want to say you're a really cool dude. I'm like, thanks, man. Uh, don't worry, I won't tell anybody you were watching MTV. <laughs> yep, I'm going to put it on blast, dude. You're out there loving MTV. <laughs> what a screenshot. fucking loser this guy is. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. That, All right. <laughs> um, we're going to take a, a break for a second, and then Sarah's going to come in and ask some more questions, um, kind of figure out the things that I, I miss because oh. <laughs> I'm the dumbest idiot that ever lived, <laughs> according to uh, – Fanboy sixty eight, <laughs> uh, yeah, he he knows a lot. Um, all right, we'll be right back. Thanks. Say hi to everyday people. Guys, welcome back. We're here. Uh, we just took a decent amount of time to just harass the <laughs> shit out of our. Uh, what are you, the the guru? What's your official title of John Sosa? We're talking about John Sosa. John Sosa. Like, I think he's technically a producer, one. but he's Battery. like. Contract, I'm president. Dang. Oh, you're a president. Comedy store records, wow. comedy store records. Oh. which includes reality. which includes comedy store podcast. Yeah. As a subsidiary. And I help film all the memorials we'll be doing. Nice. It's significantly, it's like just a slight. Uh, all like all the right memorials. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, that sounds it's really right fun. below being the president of Peloton right now. <laughs> He's like, I can't wait for those memorials. If we can get more people dying, we're going to pitch this as a show. <laughs> yeah, I just want to. I'm dying look, down here. <laughs> I've had multiple people compliment me on my memorial emceeing, oh. and I'm really hoping that this is a future I can, you know, dip my toe in and keep it there. <laughs> If you need a host for your funeral. <laughs> hey, d tired of a sad old funeral that only losers talk about? I'm the guy. You know, you we would, can make anything you'd exciting. You'd be great at funerals Thank and you. weddings. Like, even just, like, being a... Uh, yeah, hosting all of it. Officiating weddings. I was furious that Saget's people didn't contact me to see if I was interested in, you know, putting together something. Louis Anderson, I've got some good Louis Anderson stories. Mitchy Mitchy Shore's uh, memorial here. He walked through and oh, are those your cookies? <laughs> I'm on a diet, so I can't have any. But Mitchy would want me to have some. Sounds like my kind of guy. Yeah. I got, you know what? You should definitely have some, Louie, for sure. Um, how are you, Sarah? I'm good. good. It's good how to be things? back. Yeah. yeah. Things are good. Things, things are, are good? busy. Okay. Yeah, busy. Working. Uh, but glad to be here. Glad to see you. You're always so chipper and Thank inviting. You. So it just I am feels... the sunshine. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people say that. I might not be sunshine, but I'm at least lightning, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're definitely. Dangerous. I was afraid at first, like, listening to some of your podcasts. I was like, oh, God, because I just have this fear of making people annoyed. And I'm like, he's going to hate me. But I'm like, after I listen to more, I'm like, this guy's a sweetheart. He's, Thank you. He's a, a lot sweetheart. of people aren't willing no to admit it. No one's ever called him that. <laughs> that's, that's the main thing people call me. 
Heart no. of Gold. That's that's mostly what I'm known as. As long as you're not French or Canadian. Ugh. Uh, or from New York. Yeah. Oh. He has a lot of things that he hates. There's really. so many things. There's yeah. 50 states totally worthy of hatred. Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people don't say about America. <laughs> well, uh, but I'm also excited to meet Matt. This is uh, this yeah. is really, you're, you're a very fascinating person. And uh, I'm actually like, I I think it's admirable. Like, when did this stuff with the catfish happen? Like, how uh, old were you? Do you care? You don't have to say your age. This is Hollywood, so you don't have to say. No, I was, uh, um, I was, that's the thing is I'm bad with just knowing <laughs> ages. Because I get people that ask me questions about my life, and they're like, oh, what year or what age were you when that happened? And I'm like, I don't know, like 6 to 20-something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so Sometime why? between 5 and 45. <laughs> no, uh, I was probably like 20 i think i was 26 mm-hmm. um and um sorry what was the question again my brain was i like was just asking you how old you were when it happened oh. and like like what is it like do they just knock it, on your yeah. door like you don't know they're coming you have so, no warning um no there was a phone call that happened first and it was the host calling and that's when i was like trying to make the decision on if i wanted to do it mm-hmm. um and they filmed like on his side of things calling me uh, and she gave him my number, obviously, and I was like, "Bitch!" No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How dare uh, you? Yeah, it's it's um, it feels like it's been a hundred million years, but yeah, it was like 2011 is when it filmed, and 2012 is when it came out. Okay. So yeah, it feels like a really, really, really long. Because I remember, a decade's a long time. Yeah, <laughs> it is a long time. Yeah. I remember when that show came out, and just like I still don't think I understand why they called it catfish. Like, why is it called uh, catfish? So I finally watched because it. So the show is based on a documentary uh, that the host Neve yeah. um, was a part of, and then the the show came out after that. Um, I should know the definition. It was in the documentary. It was one of the the people he met had explained a story about catfish, and that's where he came up with the idea. I assume I have no idea whether this is true. I just always assumed, and then immediately was like, obviously I'm right. <laughs> um, I assume it meant. You want to catch a fish, and you you get one on the line. You're like, I caught a fish, and then when it's a catfish, you're like, oh, it's a no, catfish. No, that's not what back. it is. I think it has something to do with your. You definitely did. hundred percent right. It was like hundred percent like right. It's because I think catfish can change genders, no. or they can change. Is that true? No. So the basis of it. <laughs> See, I think we're it both was, right. It was supposed to be like an oh, like an artsy deep thing. Uh, <laughs> where oh. when he went, so basically in the documentary he got catfished. Uh, he thought he was talking yeah. to a model. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it's crazy because the the picture that the catfish uh, used in the documentary was of this girl who lived in Vancouver, Washington, where I lived, and the girl uh, that he was he thought he was talking to lived in Michigan. So it was like I lived in Vancouver, and Kim for oh. my episode it was uh-huh. like a weird connection. Yeah. Um. But anyway, when he went to go talk, she, I guess she had like a husband or something that was there and they were chatting and talking about stuff. And he said it just had something to do with connection of uh, like fishermen use catfish to keep fish on the boat, uh, like on their toes, like moving around, like chasing them or something like that. I really should know. it. Oh, but yeah. I yeah, think yeah. They use catfish to keep the fish alive so that the meat stays tender the whole mm-hmm. like. Because if they die too early, then the fish spoil on the way back to shore. I yeah. think you're right. I think so, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah, and and that was what the guy told him, and the host didn't know. And that that's kind of where he came up with to use that um, in this situation. But the thing is, is a lot of TV shows now and just what people know about a lot of the dramatic episodes that have happened, uh, it kind of has like a real, a real negative thing to it. So when people find out I was on it, and they find out I was the catfish. They're like, oh, what did you do? And all mm-hmm. this crazy stuff. And I yeah. have to really explain it. Um, but, yeah. So no, that- it's fine. It's <laughs> like things that, like, I, I mean, uh, like something. I had met the, a guy that did it to me. Uh, so I had met him in person. He just lied oh, about everything yeah. about himself, you know. Mm-hmm. But I was the one that figured it out. And so I made it public and I talked about it on Ari Shafir's podcast. And then all these other women started contacting me because they were like engaged to him too, or I oh. uh, had kids with him and like, and they had been t- with him for years and wow. I had only been dating him for like four months and I was the one that figured it out. So wow. I was like, look at me and he, <laughs> you know, they the quickly show. turn and they're like, 
I'm going to tell like the, the FBI, I'm going to tell the government, they're all going to come after you. Cause he was in the military. Uh-huh. He said he was special forces. And I was like, please have them call me. I have lots of stories. <laughs> I would love to speak with them. And then that just like shut everything down because he realized I wasn't afraid of him, but wow. it's like, and because think, of that, we got rid of the military. Yeah. Is that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want, look, I, I, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, important conclusions and if we can shut down the american military (laughs) this is the only way let's do it (laughs) yeah i I forgot about that yeah yeah i remember but i had met it was a little different because like he was tricking me but i was fully aware i had met him in person on a military base so it all seemed plausible um but i got him because of the baseball thing like he never called me by my name Mm -hmm. he always called me pet names and I think it's because he was cutting and pasting everything like wow. with emails. And I got an email and I was like, this doesn't sound like it's for me, for me. Wow, and then I was like missing yeah. him <laughs> and Googling him. And he said he played baseball in college. So I was trying to look up information on that because, you know, as soon as you sign to a college, it should be everywhere. And I couldn't yeah. find anything. And th- Yeah, that's like, suspicious. Yeah. So anyway, I, wow. what my n- enough about me. Uh, what, what was your uh, AOL handle? What was your messenger hand? Do you remember? It better be creepy. It, it better, better be, be creepy, super creepy. And it better be fun. And it, you better I hope it's still like be d- using it. Number one Danzig fan. <laughs> something. No, it's so dumb. It was, uh, I just, oh God. It was Elmo in your pants. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know hey, why. You I was trying to be random and uh-huh. weird. And I think I accomplished my goal. Um, but yeah, I, and I'm not using. It. I want my job resume yeah. right now. <laughs> I wanted creepy, and you knocked it out of wow, the park with that, that one. Elmo in your pants. I don't even feel like we could have gotten that if we had used Mad Libs. I wouldn't have known. Yeah, There's yeah. A lot favorite of that. Uh, favorite Sesame Street character location <laughs> under a, a piece of clothing. <laughs> That's the only way we're getting there. <laughs> Elmo it was very in your specific pants. Specific Mad Lib. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Well, yeah. I was 14, so you know, I guess I could have been a pedophile at that age. Um, yeah. You re- you're gonna have to go really at 14. <laughs> I was yeah. just like right at the. the We're actually busting you. Get him in here. Yeah. <laughs> you're on another I reality. Was just, like, at the birthing center, like waiting for them to pop out. I'm like, what's up? No. What? Um, and then how did you guys even connect on Messenger? So basically. Uh, so I guess maybe you can kind of say it's catfishing, but not really. Is she was a f- like a f- friend on my friend's friends list. <laughs> so, so you guys knew the friend. same person. Yeah, and then I, um, I was just on, or his thing because the AOL people would just sign on and just leave the computer open and come back to it all the time. It was like the cell phone situation mm-hmm. um, back then. And he, my buddy signed in, and then he left, and then, you know, all the noises that used to pop on this when people would come in, and I saw her name, and just started playing around. But then I was like, oh, she's kind of cool. So then we actually connected on my stuff and started talking and okay. talking on the phone. You catfished her twice. Is yeah. that what's going on here? <laughs> First, you were pretending to be your buddy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you um, still talk to her or keep in touch? I do, uh, and I wish I would be better about it. It's just kind of like that with all my friends. It's just, I feel... I just I hate talking on the phone. Number one, I feel like a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. nobody it's like, likes I feel like, I feel so Anyone f- who likes that is <laughs> the type of person who's ruined this planet. As far as I'm I concerned, I just I feel like the thing is, is when you're on the phone, most of the time it's probably business, or you have to like act a certain way. And I hate being fake. So like I hate like when on, in my job, every once in a while I have to talk to engineers, and I'm like, when I see the phone calls coming, I'm like, all right, I do a couple of breathing exercises. I'm like, you uh. can do this, and it's usually not as bad as I think it's going to be, but it's just. I'm like, why are you, when my friends try to call me, I'm like, why are you not texting me? I will hang up on you them gotta, and text them. You got to at least, <laughs> you got to at least send a text saying, hey, I'm going to call you Yeah, in five are you minutes. ready for this? Yeah. I'm like, no. The answer is no. You know it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it sounds like you have a lot of fears. You have a fear of singing. You have a fear of talking on the phone. Well, that's We're going to get over that tonight, though, because yeah. you're about ready to do a number for <laughs> us. Ryan Secret, <laughs> yeah. get in here. No, uh, that, that's a lot of what, I mean, even just, in the beginning of my journey and, and saying yes to that show and then moving down here, a lot of people were like, what are you doing? It's crazy down there. But before I moved down here, I started working on my mental health for, I've been working on it, like just really focusing on it for mm-hmm. probably five, four or five years now. Um, and I live with my sister and she has two kids now and you, you know about kids. <laughs> I certainly do. Yeah. So it was like that <laughs> helped me cause I'm like, Oh, I can't act. <clears throat> a certain way around them and it kind of yeah. like 
it kind of got me focusing on myself because I was like, I don't want them to see the shit that I saw growing up from my parents or lack thereof. And so, like, I wanted to be Uh-oh. <laughs> now, now we're going to get to it. And now we're getting to the deep cuts. Yep. We were, we we're letting you wander <laughs> to the point. <laughs> so your like, parents are here. Bring them out. <laughs> yeah. oh. Um, <laughs> the worst got you program of all time. Hey man, if you found my dad, that would be really cool. Cause I got a couple things to say to that guy. Um, okay, we'll yeah. track him down. <laughs> what's what's this guy's name? <laughs> Same name actually. It's really great. Every He's time I Matt see Lowe? my name, I'm I'm Matthew Russell Lowe Jr. So wow, um, I've actually told a few. I haven't told my mom yet because I don't want to hear the shit. But uh, I'm actually interested in taking the junior off my name just because I hate him so much and I didn't realize how much that hatred was uh inside keep so. the junior get rid of everything else go just by junior, <laughs> junior like <that's> madonna it. <laughs> it's a good idea or just go by jr that's yeah. also pretty the thing sweet is, is i like my name like i like my name i hate my dad and it just sucks that he gets to make me and then put a junior at the end and then disappear and then come back and be have there. you met him at all so <laughs> so the thing is is he was in my my life in the very beginning uh but he just kept going to prison because okay. i guess he liked it there more um and in prison it's really odd because my dad is white and my mom is filipino um and a joke that i made up i'm really proud of is uh, <laughs> my dad is caucasian my mom's asian i got all the asian and none of the cock <laughs> so, <Nice>. um <laughs> there but you go. my dad it's so funny because my dad in prison is a white supremacist um, wow. But he's with my mom, and apparently, I guess there's like an agreement in prison that like whatever happens in the the room where we all meet and stuff, like they don't talk about it when you go. So like if you have mixed family or whatever, they don't talk about it when you go back in and pretend to be racist again or whatever they do right. in there. <laughs> so anyway, so we, in- we had a friend who I think is Italian, but he had to. I think he was he rolled with the Mexicans when he was in jail. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. just called him Italiano because he was he didn't want to have to be a white supremacist. <laughs> he's like, Do you know in the end, he's that? like, I guess if the Mexicans think I'm Mexican, I'm, that's how I'm going to roll. Well, yeah, that's uh, they used to do that. And I guess now mixed is obviously like a lot bigger thing. Sure. So they actually have like a other group, I guess. Dang, you, you can <laughs> just other. roll with the others. The mix others. <laughs> I don't look if I go, if I go to jail yeah. <laughs> in my day. <laughs> You didn't just go with the et ceteras, okay? <laughs> you, you picked which side of your family you wanted to be a part of. Yeah, see, that's the thing, though, is uh, I grew up in a very horrible ghetto area in, in California. It was called Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> there's a Pittsburgh, California? Yeah, but I always say it's like they couldn't afford the H because there's no H at the end. Oh. So everybody always thinks the other one. But Oh, uh, it's steel country, but S-T- E- yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think there's. I think Pittsburgh, Kansas, also doesn't oh, yeah? have the H. Oh, okay. It's probably nice. But it is all. It's not. <laughs> it, the way you described it, I'm like, wait. So Pittsburgh, California, was like, hey, we should be like that shithole Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, it was bad because uh, just walking down the street and stuff, I used to get beat up all the time. And so my grandma's thought was like, because I didn't fit in with anybody, I was a mixed race. And uh, all the different races would take turns beating me up. And so it's like my grandma was like, you know what? They did the same thing for like how your friend did. She was like, she started putting Vaseline in my hair and slicking it back and having me wear like plaid button up shirts. Yeah. All the way up to the neck. Cholo. <laughs> Still got beat up by uh, the other races. The other, yeah. But not the Mexican people anymore. So that was cool. Hey. That's what it's all about. <laughs> you Honestly, you got to find the crew. <laughs> And then you just commit. <laughs> that's really what we're learning. Here, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out down here, you know. Now, well, um, this is a good place to figure out what you. I mean, I think like you said, you had a lot of interest, and I think you should try them all because the most important thing to learn in Hollywood is what you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. I think that's more important than what you end up doing. And yeah. so, if you can try a bunch yeah. of things and you go, "Oh, that doesn't bring me joy. That doesn't bring me happiness." Like. If it feels easy and effortless and what it's supposed to be doing, then you know you're in the right spot. But it's I, like it yeah. takes so long to figure out what you don't want to do. I moved here in pursuit of being a televangelist. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to share Jesus Christ with the people. 
Okay. And it hurt. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, speaking of that guy, uh, that's actually where a lot of my fears uh, came from. Is because my grandma was like this hardcore Christian lady. Yeah. And she would just constantly tell us all the different reasons why we're going to hell, mm-hmm. um, and then make us watch all these like apocalyptic movies where the world's ending and people are getting their heads chopped off because they didn't get the mark of the beast and whatever else. And so every day I thought the world was ending. And <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. So I got well, news you better for you. Be. <laughs> it is. Grandma. Uh, and, and now that it finally feels like it, it is really, burning outside yeah. of these doors. <laughs> now that it feels like it kind of is, yeah. I'm actually the happiest I've ever been. <laughs> and I'm like, this is so crazy. Everybody else is like, the world's ending. I'm like, it's yeah, Welcome to my world. Yeah. Yeah. Join on in. No. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's crazy. That's a that is a crazy life. But I think that you, I'm sure, like hopefully you can get over your fear oh. of singing. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's that'd what be I'm cool. trying to. You got to share the talents. That's what I'm trying to do. Bury everything else. <laughs> that's that's Bury the way I look deep. at it. Uh, I I knew from a young age I had so much hate to give. <laughs> How do you present that in an acceptable way? Mm-hmm. And really, insult comedy is the only thing I <laughs> came up with. The best place to be, yeah. Dictator yeah. is a hard place to get to. <laughs> and yeah. that's really the only other option for me. Yeah, Rick doesn't really have the drive to tell, uh, to ha- can, to make Political? Followers. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. For, you got to make them love you before you can start destroying <laughs> yeah, they have the world. Them you down. First. Yeah, I'm yeah. not into it. You See? might be good for Scientology or something. Yeah, though. you'd be a great cult See, leader. <laughs> maybe, but I just it it's so confusing. That's really what it all comes the down to. The problem is the all only those reason they need a better pamphlet because <laughs> you know they're saying they're going to audit me and stuff, and then I got worried about taxes, and so just find better words, Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so funny because uh, when I first visited Los Angeles, I took a picture of the center and sent it to my mom. I was like, hey, uh, I went in and they talked to me about some stuff. They took like a blood sample or something. And like, all she's like, what are you doing? Don't do it. Like, <laughs> blood sample. <laughs> uh, anyway, I signed over the house, mom. Yeah. You're catfishing your mom. Yeah. Yep. That's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah, right. This guy's he's got a lot of people he's taken down. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt. Thank you very yeah, much thank for you. doing we appreciate this show. It, You're a very, very fascinating cool. guy. We <laughs> wish you luck in all of your endeavors. Is thank there you. anything you want to promote? Is there anything? Uh, Where can we see you singing? Uh, mm-hmm. Eventually. So I try to put um, videos. I was doing a series called Motivation for a while. It's actually mm-hmm. on here. Um, I plan to continue that. I was just getting settled down here and trying to get over missing my niece and nephew. Oh, um, yeah. Anyway, um, I was there since they were born, so I'm like trying to get mm-hmm. over that heartbreak. Um and crying while looking at my sister's nonstop photos online sure, is sure. helping a lot. That's nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. But um, I basically, if they, if people want to find me on Instagram, uh, Lotivation, my last name, Low, and then you know, play on words. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get it. I was uh, so confused. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that, or if you just search my name, it should come up. Uh, Matt, Lo- you're telling them just to look up Matt Low. <laughs> If you, look up, if you look up Matt Lowe, like With on Facebook, Lodevage. it'll probably oh. be uh, the first one that comes up, um, and my faces, they'll see it. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and This mug, Lotivation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I would love anybody that needs support and just wants to follow the journey, but also just, like, if they feel alone, I just love talking to people, uh, because that was, like, a vow that I made when I decided that I want to live, I'm like, I'm going to share my story and I'm going to support other people. Cause I just felt so alone. So, uh, and then also my buddy makes horror films. If people like horror stuff, uh, acmofficial.com. You can check that out. Nice. So. Cool. <laughs> All right. Nice. Well, good luck to you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you for coming yeah, thanks down. Thanks for coming on, man. No problem. Uh, <laughs> what do you got going on? Oh, I have nothing. You're not promoting You mean anything? me to promote something? Yeah. No, I have nothing. You're not interested? I always promote this show oh. when I'm on stuff. Right, I'm so. like, listen, the what? Are we, are we doing more live shows? Have we got anything in the books? Yeah, I don't think we have. Do we have a live no show? No one's told us anything. Oh, you- Sosis, you're supposed to let us know this stuff. We're literally just talking about it at the same time. Yeah, but you didn't say it was confirmed. It's on a list near the batteries. March 30th? Yep. Okay. <laughs> March 30th at the Comedy Store? Not March 9th. March 30th. Okay, live show at the Comedy Store, March 30th. You're just lucky I have nothing on my calendar <laughs> indefinitely. We just told Rick <laughs> in on camera. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, no, this I is mean, bullshit. To be fair, we were going to be down here. So basically, <laughs> we were just going to say walk upstairs. Yeah. Downstairs. Yeah. Well, that's a lot for Rick. And that's when you have your colonoscopy as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're doing it on the live show. Dude. 
finally. <laughs> okay. I'm not even sure what it involves, but as long as one, but, you know. if we could <laughs> if we could figure out how to scope my dick. I want you to do it. <laughs> I, listen, I, I don't want to get weird here, but since you, you felt the pain, yeah, that's the only person I'm allowing in on this. Oh You're not God. down? I'm, I'm, I, I take it or leave it. Leave take it, it or Jeez, leave it. Jeez, unbelievable. Oh, God. All right. All I ask for is passion. Um, guys, uh, you can find me, obviously, Friendster. Uh, I'm there a lot. My AOL yeah. name. Snapbook. Um, I uh, think you're on Snapbook. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Snapbook. Oh, yeah. What's your AOL Grindr? name? Um, I, I think I'm Original Crip <laughs> over on AOL. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I had an email address, uh, Original Crip at Hotmail for a while. <laughs> I swear to God. And every time I would tell people that was my email, they'd be like, I'm not sending you an email there. <laughs> I'm like, all right. My old email was Mr. <laughs> underscore belvedere <laughs> they were less into that one oh, um, God. yeah so anyway look for me uh i'm i'm on monsters of catfish Stop <laughs> it. thanks for, right. thanks for listening guys bye. I appreciate it. bye if you'd like to be a guest on our show please dm ingram pod on twitter that's i-n-g-r-a-h-a-m pod on twitter goodbye Special thanks to The Comedy Store and to Brian Rips for the dope-ass music.